Okay. The first case on tonight's agenda is REZ 20234. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Mr. Dillon, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Commissioners. Tonight's case. Give me just a second. Computer seems to have frozen. There we go. Uh, tonight's case represents. A uh, request by the applicant to rezone approximately 18 acres along Fordman Road from its current EA Estate Agricultural to RA Residential Agricultural in order for the property to potentially be subdivided. While we're on this slide of the current zoning, I would like to point out the Fordman Crossing subdivision in the upper left-hand corner of this slide. Staff has been in, trying to search for the case uh, when this became R21 and was actually searching, has narrowed it down between 1984 and 1987. Sometime between then, it was rezoned to R10. However, the subdivision itself was not platted until 2005. The reason we said sometime between 84 and 87 is that in 1987, there was a case by the gentleman who owns a property, which is currently zoned EA, to rezone from, e, from R10 back to EA. But we have not been able to produce any sort of minutes from the Planning Commission or Board of Commissioners of when that actual case went forward. So it has been there for approximately 30 plus years and again was recently applied in the last 15, but just a note here. Uh, the future property, uh, future land use depicts it as an agricultural forestry character area, and there are wetlands running through multiple parcels, including some pocket wetlands located on the subject property. There are approximately 131 properties that do have access to Cordman Road directly, again, 87 of those being in the Cordman Crossing subdivision, with sole access to Cordman Road. Um, which is not allowed under current ULDC standards, which limits that number to 25. So, just a footnote there. Again, large mixture of parcels and sizes here, ranging from over 200 and almost 90 on the very southern portion, to uh, some of the smaller portions that you see, Portman Crossing, uh, that's half acre size, and then the mixture um, getting progressively smaller towards the very southern end of uh, Portman Road. Again, this is the aerial imagery from 2023 of the northern two-thirds of Portman Road. You see a mixture of open agricultural land, uh, maintained open forests, as well as some residential development. And as we go south, you see the residential development on the five-acre lots, approximately there at the smallest. Um, and again, the wetlands dictating some of the uh, size and use. There are some active fields to the west and planting of pines to the east and south. And as we go further up along uh, Fordman Road, almost a mile and a half stretch there uh, along the very southern portion. Now the request is for RA, but first, as it is, the lot is EA. So without rezoning, the property could potentially be divided, as you see here. Minimum 210 foot lot width. These are approximately 300 plus, plus foot. Um, again, there's 710 feet north to south. So the splitting in half gives you a five acre, five acre, and then the existing home site being approximately seven. If approved for straight RA, you could potentially get six new home sites on the property. And then at a minimum with the condition of 210 feet, that number shrinks to five. The lots on the east again are a little over 210 foot each, but there is potential to split that seven and a half acre uh, eight acre lot to the west where the existing home site is in two. There's also potential for a condition to lot, uh, limit the number of lots, which again, eight acre home site, which is similar to this lot to the west, which is approximately nine acres, and then the three acre lots along the east, minimum 210 feet. These are approximately 220 uh, feet wide. Again, that would be up to a surveyor to divide. So, with all that being said, the TRC didn't have any other objectionable comments. And staff found the request consistent with the comprehensive plan, but if approved, staff recommends at least having all minimum lot widths be 210 feet. Thank you, Katie. Commissioners, any questions for Katie? I got a quick, Katie. Uh, the subject property, the two lot right behind it, do you have to know the width at the at Portland Road they are? Are you referring to the lots to the north here? Uh, that's correct, the two, yes, sir. Yes, they're, they're approximately 214 and 220 feet. So they're very, very close to you, proposed 210. Yes, sir. 214 as well, sir? I believe 210. Okay. Yeah, 220 to the, on the lot to the north, 214 on the lot to the south, sir. All right, I'm going to 
back to where it gives us the lot sizes in this southern part of Fort Monroe. Which will right here. Mm -hmm. right here. Yes, technically, sir. It okay. does exist. Um, and 1.84. Yes, sir. Again, those are legal lots of record. They have not been combined with any other parcels. Um, I believe they are under the same ownership as the adjacent parcels, but they technically exist as a legal non parcel. Okay. Do you see that, I do. Thank you. They're talking about our Any other questions for <laughs> So, JD, with your uh, recommendation with conditions, mm -hmm. about, I guess that's the 210 foot width. Yes, sir. How many lots can they put in here, more or less? Approximately four new lots. Okay. And that, that's shown here on the screen. So, so they, they the, the owners are anticipating keeping the existing home site, is that? That's my understanding. Okay, and so with this five lot pack you have, what is that throat of that 4.5 lot? Is that 210 also? Uh, that is 60 feet at the road, sir. Minimum lot requirements, 60 feet of the road. You kind of notice this pattern on those lots to the north. You notice a little foot? That is a 60 foot wide road frontage, which is required under the ULDC. That lot actually narrows down to 20 feet for a paved uh, improvement per fire code. Fire code requires at least 20 foot wide paved 13 and a half feet uh, tall clearing uh, <clears throat> for access to the property. Okay, so, so if we go, if you go to this five thing, you would exempt the 210 road frontage for that 4.5 acre lot? Uh, the building the building width, the lot width is measured at the building line, which is parallel to the road. Thank you, sir. And that well exceeds the 210? Yes, sir. Again, these aren't 100% to scale, uh, but, they, but they do meet the minimum 210 lot width requirement, most of them exceeding that, actually. So that, that's what I was looking at earlier, as, you know, if, if we divided it five, lot, five acre lots, you get three, and with this new design, only two more lots. Mm -hmm. Correct. One, one being existing structure already, regardless. Correct. So three is what he could get right now, avoiding all rezoning. Seven is what he could have total if he was just approved for straight RA. RA lot width is a minimum of 150. Um, that's why the distance, EA is currently 210, RA is 150. And that's what this slide looks like, seven total home sites. This to staff is much too dense for the area. Um, it doesn't really follow the pattern. Even 210, again, not entirely out of the question, but again, that's just a simple 210. Uh, potential lot limit goes from three, picks up a, picks up a fourth lot. So, Any other questions, Mr. Dillon? All right, in that case, I will now open the public hearing portion of this case. If there's anyone here this evening who would like to speak in favor of this case, please come forward. State your name and address for the record. If you would like to speak in favor of this case, please come forward. Seeing no one come forward, is there's anyone here who would like to speak against this case? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. My name is Gretchen Quarterman. I live at 6565 Quarterman Road. I live at the top northern bit of the road. I've um, provided you a letter, um, which I'm going to read a little bit from and then just sort of talk about some talking points. I don't like to bring my time. time. Um, I'll start just by asking you to deny this rezoning. Portland Road is predominantly agriculture and forestry. If you look at that one picture, it's mostly green, doesn't it? Yeah, green, to the fields or forests. Um, it's zone EA, almost every lot, except for those ones up by the subdivision, where nobody can find. I personally looked through the minute books from 1980 to 1990 looking for that rezoning, and it does not exist. So. Um, those are sort of a little anomaly up there. They are not representative of our neighborhood. 
um, that from the proposed rezoning is inconsistent with the Lawrence County Comprehensive Plan. The Comprehensive Plan says that this is a portion of an agriculture area, not a uh, five more houses area. Uh, in the last couple of years, the Planning Commission has um, delightfully uh, recommended um, to turn down the zoning out on Miller Bridge and that the Dow General at the corner of Skipper Bridge. And I would ask that you would also turn this one down. Now, when the planners are talking about how many uh, lots of have access to Portland Road, there are 44, if you count all of those triangles. Um, and Mr. Bailey, my husband and I own those two triangles, and they have bought our property. Um, I bought them from the neighbor so that nobody could build on them because they're legal non-conforming lots. Um, there are 44, even if you count that my husband and I own four of them, and his niece owns three of them. So instead of 44, there's um, like 39 or 38, and then if you divide the 1,900 acres, the average lot size out there is 50 acres, not 12, when you count in the subdivision. And the subdivision on my petition there, lots of people in the subdivision, they don't want this either. We don't need any more traffic on Hamburg Road. Hamburg Road, when Johnny Hamburg died and he sold off those lots, there are covenants in those lots that they cannot be subdivided. So they made an effort to protect our neighborhood. We need to protect our neighborhood. Portman Road only lets out onto Hamburg Road. It doesn't go anywhere. There's no other place to go to. Farrell Scruggs, immediately across the street, owns 600 acres. He owns the whole side of the road. Tommy Stelby owns 110. Immediately across the road the other way. Those are big pieces of property that are in forestry. And our neighborhood is forestry. The cases are really, they're nice being like, they're just, maybe get off the make a with 17 acres. I don't know. Anyway, <coughs> I think that covered it. Oh, one more thing. The Dorfman Report. You all remember the Dorfman Report um, that, um, Development should be close to existing services. And the county is already paying millions of dollars to bring water all the way up to the Magnolia World. Um, we should be building houses by existing services. We shouldn't be sending the sheriff, the fire department. I promise you, if any house is built on the end of this road and there's a fire, it'll burn down. Because a house on Cat Creek, halfway between mine and the fire station, burned to the ground this year. So any house in out here, the fire department isn't going to be able to help them. Fire services are not available. We should be here building houses where the services are. There you go. Please be mine. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gordon. Is there anyone else here this evening who would like to speak against this case?